the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello everybody. Confucius says, he who asks questions may remain a fool for a minute, but he who does not ask remains a fool forever. That's a pretty good Chinese proverb, wouldn't you say? Such is the power of questioning. Exploring questions and answers is how we learn. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So hop aboard and let's go fishing. And we'll be answering some of those questions and answers as we fish along today. Okay? Come on, let's go. Do you need big baits to catch nice sized bass? Absolutely not. Some really big bass are caught on small baits. Watch. Whoa. Right at the boat. Oh, I'm telling you, he's full of himself. They're trying to get up in that cover. But day in and day out, a bigger, slower bait is gonna be more naturally attractive to larger bass. Their natural selective process is geared to taking the opportunity to grab the most groceries with least effort. This concept conserves energy. And big baits simply draw more attention and provide a better chance for contact. Big bass, they're not tailored to do the 100 yard dash for a meal. They select a comfortable spot and they wait for unsuspecting forage to diddy bop by. And if the prey is worth the taking, being the perfect predator that they are, they take it. It's for those reasons that bass anglers use big baits. And there's no doubt about it that big baits work. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, you big rascal. Easy. All right, calm down. That little bitty bait in that big old mouth. You liked it? There it is. Oh, isn't that a pretty one? Big old fat fish. We're using the equipment, using a six, nine quantum smoke rod and a medium heavy action. And we're using a Speed Freak spinning reel and this particular reel it takes up almost 36 inches of line per revolution that's a lot of line per turn we're using a 20 pound strand braid and attached to that we've got a about a 16 inch section of strand 20 pound floor cast on the end of that for a fluorocarbon leader. Where are you going? What are you going to do? There we go. Whoop, whoop. Nice little bass. Toodaloo. 
Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Think of that, huh? Sorry, you can't have it. We're using these little stickos. The Bass Pro Shops little tournament series stickos. And I don't know, there's about, I think there's about 25 of them in a box. And they're about three and a half inches long. And they're pretty neat little old bait. See them? I'm using a little black and blue, and they come in an assortment of colors. But they're tough little bodies. You can rig them, Carolina rig them, you can drop shot them. You can fish them a lot of different ways, but uh, I'm just using a weedless uh, lead head on it, Bass Pro Shop lead head, but they, the Sticko, they make them in a lot of different sizes, but uh, you can Texas rig this thing, you can Carolina rig it, you can drop shot it, or you can fish it on a lead head, but uh, like I say there, neat little bait, you catch the fish and they do real well. I've done real well with them, fishing smallmouth in the creeks, and a lot of anglers use them up north on smallmouth, and they have real good luck with them. Now here's a good question. What can you do to increase your odds of catching a truly big bass? That's easy enough. Fish where the greatest number of trophies are. If it's largemouth you're wanting, it'd be hard to ignore the well-earned reputation of Southern California. And if it's smallmouth, well, if you're looking for a big trophy smallmouth, well, there's only one place. That's Dale Hollow Lake in Tennessee. That place would be very hard to beat. Of course, fishing where they are also means targeting a lake's known trophy producing regions. But you'll also have to fine tune your methods and techniques by fishing at the best trophy producing structure and depths for the prime times of the year. All this information can be obtained before you arrive at these destinations. Now, it's smart to do your homework in advance. Ooh, that's a good one.
Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Fish defunct, kill the stink, and Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Bring me all the way to the back of the boat. Oh, yeah, look at that one. You little toughy. Easy. Wait a minute, buddy. I'm going to let you go. You just act reasonable. They make this thing with the standard stick old tail. And they make it with a little forked tail. See that little forked tail right there? And that's the one you liked, wasn't it? Look at him, look at it. Huh? That's a pretty one. Yeah, you are. All right, we're going home. Going home. See ya. Look at him. <laughs> Bye. See you around. Yep, it's a nice little bait. Small baits catch lots of fish, but they will catch big fish too. We haven't got it around a big one yet, but if we do, I'll assure you, the big fish will hit it. Look at me. I'm in this little boat. But it's a fine little boat. It's a big seller with Tracker. They sell a lot of these little boats. It's a good little boat to get around with, easy to haul. Very affordable boat. Got a big live well, a lot of storage. And it'll scoot with that 50 on it. Now here's a surprising question. Just how big a bait can a bass eat? Bigger than what you might believe. Check this out. Were you aware that an 8.5 inch bass has the ability to swallow a 3.5 inch shad minnow? And get this. That same bass can swallow another bass that's four and three quarter inches long, well over half its own length. But as bass grow larger, it becomes more adept at swallowing shad and other forage with a more streamlined profile. A seven pounder can eat another bass that's almost 14 inches long, weighing almost a pound and a half. I remember one time in Mexico, I was fishing with the late great Porter Wagner and we saw something flopping out in the lake. We were down there with Johnny Morris and another country great, uh, the late, great little Jimmy Dickens. And 
we saw something flopping and I just turned the boat and Porter said, what is that? And I said, let's see it over and look at it. And it was about a 12 pound bass that had a two pound bass hung in its, in its throat. And we eased over and picked it up. And we worked the dorsal fins, and reached in and kind of laid them back and we pulled it out without uh, hurting this big bass. And uh, he was surely died, but we took the two pound bass out. It was dead and uh, worked with a big 12 pounder and with him a little bit and off he swam. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. How often do you oil your reel? Reels tend to be one of the most neglected items of your tackle. They should be well cared for. Now I try to clean and oil my reels every month with a quality lightweight oil. One drop on the bearings and other moving parts is plenty. The key is to apply it at regular intervals. Don't add clean oil to dirty oil. That will only compound the problem. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. I'll never forget one of the many things my grandfather taught me about fishing, and that was being quiet. Maybe he wanted me to hush up so he could concentrate. <laughs> now seriously, many times it pays off. And that's why I like this little four-stroke motor so doggone much. It allows me to idle back through this shallow cover without even spooking a minnow. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Whoa, baby. What are we doing? Oh my goodness, that's good. <laughs> They're just so fun to catch on a spinning rod like that. Yes, they are. It's coming up. <laughs> Woo! That big old fish hit that little bait, didn't he? There it is. Ta-ta. A nice one. Pretty fish. Okay, buddy. See ya. You know, talking about the size of forage that a bass can eat, Surprisingly, you know, we talked about this before, but a two and a half pound bass can eat a nine inch shad. But do they do it on a regular basis? No. But they can without any real problem. Two of the bass's favorite forage here in the south are gizzard and threadfin shad. Big fish prefer gizzards due to their larger size. While threadfin swim in huge schools, the gizzard normally, not always, but normally hold in smaller groups of a half a dozen to a couple of dozen adults per school. They're filter feeders feeding on plankton, but have a preference for decaying food matter near the bottom. Bill, I hook a lot of really nice bass I feel I should catch, but they just seem to get off. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> well, a lot of things have got to go right, 
There's no rushing, no horsing. Your drag system needs to be smooth. No faulty equipment, quality line, good knots, sharp hooks, and be confident. Fish right there. Oh boy, that's a better one right there. That is a handful. Oh boy, yeah, look here. Oh, here we go back. Nice one. Okay, bigger. You tore my little baby up. Poor fish is blind in one eye. But he can sure see out of that one. Nice. Big old fish hitting those little baits. That's what they want. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go back. You ready? Huh? You ready? Okay, here we go. Been eating that shed. Today's been a fun day. Caught a lot of fish and caught some good fish. I tell you what, what a remarkable little bait. If you've never tried this little guy, you ought to swing by Bass Pro and pick you up a pack up, give them a try. So the next time you lose a big bass, remember what Confucius says. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.